Now with more iPhone choices out there than ever available before, it's no wonder that it's confusing for people to try and figure out which iPhone to buy. But in today's video, I'm gonna do my best to try to break things down in a very simple way to make it easy to try and make the best choice for you. And in this video, we're only gonna cover the iPhones that are currently available on Apple's website. We're not gonna to dig too far into the past and go into a bunch of old iPhone models. We're gonna just focus on what's available for sale right now that you can just buy from Apple. And we're gonna start with the lowest price phones and then move up to most expensive ones and kind of give like the pros and cons and the advantages of each one. And we're starting right now. So obviously price is gonna be the biggest factor for most people on which iPhone they're gonna buy. And if you're looking to get the most budget iPhone available today in 2022, then your option is going to be the iPhone SE, the second generation. And honestly, I think this is a fantastic phone, guys. This phone, the base model, starts at $399, and it comes with a lot of the nice upgrades that a lot of the newer iPhones have, and it kind of gives you everything you need, but nothing that you don't. And that's how Apple is able to offer this phone at such a bargain price. I mean, I remember when I bought my iPhone 6 back in 2014, I paid right around that price, and that was the subsidized price with like the AT&T contract, because the phone actually costs like six or seven hundred dollars. And this iPhone SE is like ten times better than the iPhone 6. And the fact that you can buy a brand new one, cash money for three ninety nine, I think that's an amazing deal. Now, as of today, when I'm filming this, it is February 9th, 2022. And on Apple's website right now in the refurbished store, they have several iPhone 8s available for sale. But I would really caution you against looking at these phones for a couple of different reasons, okay? The body style and the design of the phone, first of all, is basically the same as the iPhone SE. So it's a much older device. It has the A11 chip versus the A13 chip. And on top of that, these phones are actually more expensive, which makes no sense because they're refurbished models and they're older. And right now, Apple's asking $449 for the cheapest one. And the only thing that those iPhone 8s have over the SE models that are for sale is it looks like the couple of them they have on the site right now are going with 256 gigabytes of storage. So I guess for 50 more dollars, if you really wanted that extra storage and don't really care about the extra features you're gonna get with the iPhone SE, then maybe look at those refurbished 8s. But for most people, I'm gonna say, just ignore those refurbished iPhone 8s and go straight with the iPhone SE because the SE has the faster and better chip. It has the portrait mode, which the iPhone 8 does not. It also has newer iPhone features like stereo recording and cinematic video stabilization. And on top of that, it's $50 cheaper for a brand new model versus $50 more for a refurbished one. And to me, that's kind of a no-brainer. So if you want a budget iPhone that really does it all, that's an amazing device, the iPhone SE is where it's at. Next up on the list is the iPhone 11, which I think is really the next best bet for a budget iPhone, because right now you can still buy a brand new iPhone 11 from the Apple Store at only $499, which is only $100 more than the iPhone SE. And honestly, guys, for that extra $100, you're getting quite a bit of extra features for only a hundred bucks and I'm gonna name them off for you here right now. For the extra hundred dollars, you're gonna get things like the ultra wide angle lens, which is awesome for recording different types of videos, especially for vlogging if you're into that. Uh, you get the larger display, you get better longer battery life, you get face ID instead of touch ID, you get further and deeper water resistance in case you get your phone wet, you get the night mode photography, you get the better zoom on the camera, and the list goes on. And that's only for an extra $100 over the iPhone SE. So I really think that the iPhone 11 is basically the sweet spot, right? If you're looking to spend very little on a new iPhone, but you want a lot of nice features and you really don't want the SE, the iPhone 11 is where it's at. Now we're gonna move on to the 12 and 13 models, and this is where things start getting a little more interesting. But 
To be quite honest with you, and this is really just my opinion, but there are some facts based behind my opinion, I think you should skip right over the iPhone 12 and go straight to the iPhone 13, and here are a few reasons why. Some of the other reasons you will want to go with the 13 model are the better battery life, you get cinematic video mode recording, you also get the faster A15 chip, you get a better base storage model option, which is 128 gigabytes now versus back then when it was still only 64. And once again, kind of looking at between the SE and the 11, the price difference is negligible, guys. For a 12 right now, they want $699, and then for only $100 bucks more, you can get the iPhone 13 for $799. You get all these extra amazing features for only that $100 extra, dollars, and I think when the price difference is really that close, it's kind of no contest. The iPhone 13 here is the clear winner. Honestly, I'm not even sure why Apple even still sells the 12, because even the 11 now offers a better value than the 12 in my opinion and last but not least we're going to move up to the 13 pro models and luckily for anybody considering these type of models you're in for a treat because basically there's really no difference this year between the 13 pro and the 13 pro max other than the display size so with the 13 Pro Max, you're going to spend $100 more. You know, the 13 Pro Max goes for $1099, and the 13 Pro starts at $999. And all you're getting in, in addition for that $100 is the extra display size. Whereas back when the 12 Pro Max came out, and the 12 Pro models back in 2020, the decision was much more difficult. And even for myself, I opted in spring to get the 12 Pro Max. I never liked those huge iPhones, but because it had the best camera that Apple offered at the time. You literally had to upgrade to the 12 Pro Max to get the best camera. I decided to go for that because I didn't want the inferior camera on the 12 Pro model. Saying I don't regret that choice whatsoever. However, this year, everything's exactly the same. They have the exact same cameras, they have the exact same specs. The only thing that's different is the screen size. And for me personally, it was actually a tougher choice this time to decide to get the 13 Pro Max because I always kind of like the smaller phones. But honestly, after having the 12 Pro Max for a full year and using it, I grew to love the extra display size and I decided to stick with the 13 Pro Max anyhow. And obviously, the 13 Pro models are to date, the best iPhones that Apple has ever made without question. They fix a lot of the issues that they had with the 12 Pro models, which to me was a fantastic upgrade. So check out my video I did about the iPhone 13. I'll have it linked down in the description below. And one thing I just want to mention to top this video off is sure, you could still look at some really old models like this iPhone 10 is still an amazing phone, but here's the deal, guys. It's going to be five years old in December, so it still has some time. I mean, it's like a little over four years old now, but it's starting to show its age, not only with you know the performance difference between this and the 13 Pro Max when it comes to the battery life and how snappy it is and things like that, but another thing you got to worry about is just how much longer these phones are going to be supported. You know, you're probably going to have like three more years at best with iOS updates and upgrades. And after that, that's usually when Apple stops supporting the older devices. So yes, you can still get these for a bargain on eBay along with a lot of other great iPhones from the past. But then again, you're looking at a used phone that you're not really sure how well it was taken care of. It could possibly need a new battery. So if you are going to buy a used phone off of eBay then just try to really verify its condition before purchasing it and preferably if you can get a model that has some Apple care coverage that will help you out a little bit too in case there are some unseen issues when you get the phone you can just take it into Apple and have them fix it and pay your small deductible but honestly with such good deals on some of these brand new iPhones that Apple still sells, I would probably avoid the used market altogether because it just doesn't seem worth it to go back and buy an older iPhone at this point and try to save a couple bucks with the amazing deals that Apple has on the iPhone 11 and the iPhone SE. So let me know which models you guys are interested in buying down in the comments below. And in the meantime, go ahead and check out my next iPhone video right over here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.